was like with earth and pot, in the hands of a great porter, Clay returns to play. Arise in the land of the living, the Akubi, Banner Bantu production. Yakubi Banner Bantu, Mutoto Wa Kibantu, Banner Vermuntu. Kembo, Tata na Nzambi, Yamazulu, Mpungu Tulendo, So Nini na Nini Somandla, Ngai Morungu, Mwenenyaga. Depending on where you are, I greet you. Nusiemi, Beto Abumbote, Banabayi Solele, Molweni Abantoana Abanguni, Molega Shiana Shiangai Nakenda Moyo, Sawubona Abantoana Babao Weto Oswe Mazuluini, Mbolani, Yes, depending on where, where you are, I greet you. It's that time we sit and rightly divide the word of truth. Today, Vanabeto, we break a rock. What language have we been speaking? What more lies have they been telling us? Let's get right into it. Banabeto, when you come into this truth, you start to connect a lot of things that had otherwise seemed foreign and uh, principles that um, <clears throat> you, you considered foreign towards you. So today we'll be looking at the Bantu languages, their linguistics, compare them to assorted examples from the Kemetic language, the language of Kam, the language of the Black people, because it's recorded in the pyramids. Uh, before you, as you can see, there's a Meduneta alphabet. The Neta, as we've previously covered, is the godlike state in you. So um, <clears throat> a few a very funny um, occurrences happened to me when I was looking into this language and I thought it prudent to share it with you, Banabeto. The Egyptian word for dog would be wa. And Banabeto, if you look at the word, for sunshine in ancient Kamit language, it would be represented by these symbols. Its pronunciation would be, there would be the element of Ra, the sun, M, mm, in, and ta, the sky. Now connecting that with the Bantu, look at this. The Egyptian word for dog shown in this skeletal template, which has the lion, the owl, and uh, the dog as uh, according to the book by Gardiner, page 459, the ancient Egyptian prefix in the case of 
I would appear to be a vowel, but in ancient Egyptian, it is considered to be a weak consonant. The, agent, the ancient Egyptian root for the word is W, which derives the word wa, a sound which imitates the barking of a dog. This is reflected in the Kiluvale. Kiluvale is a subgroup of the Bantu root wa, derived from wa, 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 giving just wa the back of a dog. In both languages, the root of the word is wa, the sound made by a barking dog, wa. The complete Kiluvale Bantu word together with the prefix ka describes a dog, kawa. So how can one compare the different prefixes I and K, and what linguistic inference can one deduce from these prefixes? Fortunately, the Kiluvale Bantu prefix K defines the characteristics pertaining to a given activity or quality. In this case, the activity of a dog is its back. The Kiluvale word K, wa means a dog. More specifically, the barker. By the comparative method, it seems likely that ancient Egyptian prefix I reflect the same characteristics pertaining the activity and quality of a barking dog as in the Kiluvali Bantu. In other words, the prefix I, uh, the I equals prefix ka. From the evidence, one may deduce that the ancient Egyptian word for a dog is iwa, wa, wa, the barker. Hence, we may conclude the following correspondences between the two languages. The Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian for dog is Iwa, which means the baka, and in Kiluvale Bantu it's Kawa, which also means the baka. Let's look at another example. Let's analyze <clears throat> the sun rises, shines in the sky. Uh, if you can see your screen, the word for sunshine would be these symbols. This is a, a, actually according to Gardiner. I just want to point out the similarities. I am no <clears throat> expert in ancient Kemetic language, but those with eyes do not require to be told C. The study of the ancient Egyptian language using Bantu vocabulary as a means of support was an ideal way for studying the complexity of words in sentences and phrases. This method of approach gave a realistic insight into the complexity of the ancient Egyptian language and the challenges faced. By analyzing the sentence, the sun rises, shines in the sky, shown by the set of hieroglyphics above, it was impossible it was possible rather to identify the Bantu and Kiswahili Bantu preposition m, similar to the Egyptian consonant m represented by the ow. This discovery was surprising as no other language to my knowledge uses this form of, of preposition. In Bantu languages, the preposition m and mu gives the concept of an entity being included in something, in or within. As an example, in the sky becomes Mujulu. The one in Julu, Zulu, Iguru, Zulu. I'm just taking what they have and connecting with what we have on the land, Banabeka. In the Bantu, Botawe dialects, the ancient Egyptian form would be mu ta in the sky. The two forms of phrases are similar in their grammatical construction, except the word for the sky is different. Other Bantu words for the sky, which give a close match with the ancient Egyptian language may be observed from the Kikamba. The Kikamba live in East Africa, Kenya to be, <clears throat> the Kamba live in East Africa, Kenya to be specific which uses the words itu or matu for the sky. And even the kikuyu say matuine to, 
describe above the clouds or that of which is in the sky. From the set of heliographics above, it soon became clear that the ancient Egyptians used the Bantu preposition m, mm, an assumption <clears throat> I had to make was this, if the ancient Egyptians used the same Bantu preposition m, mm, could more Bantu words be embedded in the language? Let's see Vanaveto. Nick, symbolized by, if you can see the casa. The, the letter spelled out the Kiswahili word nyoka. Nyoka being the pronunciation, a word used for a serpent or snake. The word nyoka or nyoka, you see, nyoka and nyoka, you see how the Bantu language doesn't lose the vibration though the spelling may be different. There's that vibration that is constant. For the word in Proto-Bantu form given by the root oka, a serpent, nik contained the root and n, was N the root or was I or was it K or was the whole combination of the letters Nick? Now we are trying to, he was, uh, the author is trying to break down these symbols, Nick. Referring back to the sentence, the sun rises, shines in the sky. The investigation was without setbacks for the word for the sun represented by the consonant R. Remember, it, ancient Egyptians, used to write using consonants only. Perhaps a way to preserve the language? I don't know. Perhaps because it was the melting pot of, of all the Bantu subgroups. I was not there. But the evidence is clear, Banavito. The Bantu, uh, the Bantu words which use the letter R for the sun, the Kishona Bantu word Ranzi denotes a ray of sun at dawn or a beam of sun or moon entering a room. This word for a ray of sun is similar to the Chitonga Bantu language given as Razi. However, the Kichaga Bantu word for the sun, Riowa, and the Kichaga word for the sun is the same Kikuyu word for the sun. Riowa Rekirada is the sun. And the Swahili word for the sun is Jua. In the Kidigo Bantu language of Tanzania, Ra means to shine. Moreover, the word for today in many Bantu languages is given as reo or leo. An example in Swahili, leo nitaenda, today I will go. Today implies the solar day. That is the space of time during which there continues to be sunlight. The Kushaiti Krendile language of Kenya, a non-Bantu language uses the word ora for the sun. However, Obenga in his book on ancient Egypt and black Africa, and that would be page 128, he gives the following words for the sun in the West Africa. Ra from the Kono language in Sierra Leone and Ra from the Susu language in Guinea. It is reasonable, Banabeto, because we are reasoning together, that, this, that the words for the sun and the ancient Egyptians used and the Bantu used for the sun are the same. Consider the next word. Eh? The word to bask in the sun is ora in Southern Sutu. And ota in Kiswahili Bantu. It is clear that these two words, ora and ota, are cognates despite having this similar consonants, ora and ota convey meanings 
which are alike, hence ora and ota give a consonant, consonantal match r tut. From this analysis, one can make the following observation and compare the Kiswahili Bantu word for a lamp or a source of light given as ta, since r is interchangeable with as proved in the above. It is reasonable to assume that r is the same as ta, giving the ancient Egyptians what ra, ra or ra, the word for sun, the next ancient Egyptian word we should uh, we can examine according to the author would be the word representing the sky. Pa. Pa. The Kiswahili word pa means a roof. It also means to rise. Alipa angani. Jisaya alipa angani. Pa, ancient Egyptian pa, represented by these symbols, is a canopy or a sky or, or heaven. And you see the Egyptians recognized the firmament, even in their, in their writings. In Kiswahili, the Bantu word pa means a roof or to fly up, ascend, to mount, or to rise. The word associated with the sun rising, shining in the sky, the following idiophone pe, derived from the Southern Sutu Bantu language, refers to the sun. Pe means to rise and shine as the sun, be hot as the sun, to shine, to be bright. Moreover, the Kiswahili Bantu word associated with this could be the word eupe, which means clear, white. Mweupe, one that is white. Now we bring in the m, m denoting that it's within, it is in, it belongs to. Like mtu, mtu, mtu has mtu, the cosmic force of creation, the car, which allows him to have the bar, the soul. Moreover, the Kiswahili Bantu word associated with this could, could be aupe, as we have seen, which means white, clear, bright, usually associated with a clear, bright sky. By definition, a canopy, a canopy is a covering and puff and performs a similar function to a roof. The ancient Egyptians uh, word pa contains the word pa followed by the feminine, feminine t, pa. Hence, the word could be pronounced as pa. This would give the ancient Egyptian word for the sky. The last word attached to the phrase of the, of the sun shines, rises, contains the word Sky, <laughs> rises in the sky, contains the word for shines, rises. Let me just move this here. By the trilateral skeletal template with consonants W, B, N, which are represented by these symbols here, the trilateral word W, B, N denotes to shine, to rise as a planet or any celestial body. In the case at hand, the celestial body being the sun is given by the determinative of the sun. Unraveling the consonants, you see now the disc is what represents the sun. Unraveling the consonants, WBN represented by a, represented a problem during the initial stages of the investigation for the Kiswahili Bantu language does not contain in its vocabulary the word shines, rises with a combination of the letters W, B, N. But after some research, and he insists after a long while researching the word, he realized that there were two possibilities, either W or B was the root. Choosing W as the root gave the Kiswahili word wa which means to shine brightly as the sun or the moon. 
which if, if uh, you're to pronounce it in uh, modern so would be to nga, nga, there's the, there's a double consonant in that, which means to shine brightly as the sun or the moon. This dim the author to the author is a good choice. And I do agree with him because he did bring to the same conclusion. My next, uh, his next consideration was to choose, which this gave ba or for bala in Bantu, Botatwe languages, and means to shine as the sun. Ba is derived from the Kishona Bantu idiophone, ba, which means shining, especially the shining of the rising sun or moon. The proto Bantu form of ba is bad. <coughs> In the Kiswahili Bantu language, moonshine or moonlight are given as mbala mwezi. Mbala, to shine, mwezi is the moon. Rejecting the Kiswahili word wa has not been the root. He then decided as ba was the correct root, having finally discovered that b was the root of the word wbn. And then further research shows that in South and Soto, Bantu, Banya or Banya means to shine. Banya, Banya. South and Soto, Bantu, Benya, 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 to be bright, to shine, to glitter. In the Silozi Bantu, it's Kubenya, to shine. In Kishona, it's to Penya. Now, also note, Banabeto, that Penya also means that small opening mpenyo, where the light comes in. To penya means to like, to squeeze in between. So if a ray of light were to pass, you say, mwangaza umepenya. Ama, or if the sun, the rays of the sun were to come into the other side, mwanga umepenya. If we are referring to the moon, then we would say, mwanga wa mwezi umepenya. Penya. Now, why the Shona and the Swahili are speaking a similar language as the, those in Kemet? You tell me if we do not bring civilization to the world. And they want us to, they want us to believe that Egypt was so different. I keep insisting the pharaohs that sat on those thrones were Bantus before interference by the heap souls. The Kizulu, in the Kizulu Bantu, Bani would mean lightning, flash, or light. In the Kizulu Bantu, Bane, Bane, idiophone of flashing, throwing sudden light. To determine the significance, W, you have to compare two different, you have to compare the uh, languages and get similarities, you know, or precedence, if you prefer, because sometimes. We have to make this as an academic exercise, but the proof is there. This, is a, this was a Bantu Egyptian linguistic study that was done to determine the, the Kiswahili Bantu word waka, which means to burn brightly, to be lit, to, to, to shine. Wawaka, to be shining, to be burning brightly. In this case, W is the verb to be and used as a prefix. You will quickly realize that wawaka, wa, wa, waka is grammatically equivalent to wabenya, wabenya, to be shining, derived from Southern Sutu. The ancient Egyptian word wabenya is an agglutination of the verb to be and the word benya to shine or to be shining. As the, addition, uh, as the addition observation, the ending nya or nya, either written with nya or nia, is the word benya or benya denotes the emission of the light rays. The Kiswahili Bantu word wawaka, burns, shines, to be shining brightly, is similar to the ancient Egyptian word wabaka, given by ancient Egypt as to be bright and shine, represented by wabaka, wabaka, wabenya, wawaka. 
the root in the Kishona Bantu word baka to kindle, to give light, and this may be further broken down to aka, protobantu, bak, to burn. Baka is also given as beka, to shine, in kibemba. By attaching the prefix wa, derived from the verb to be, the following lexical forms may be derived when comparing ancient Egyptian and Bantu. In ancient Egyptian, it would be wabak, to be bright. In Kishona Bantu, it would be wabak, to be bright. Kibemba Bantu to be wabeka, be bright. The etymology of every term expressed by the sentence, the sun rises, shines in the sky, represented by that symbol, has finally been analyzed in terms of Bantu lexical forms. Initially by establishing the proposition m, mu, which means in, plus the supporting words for the serpent, nyoka, and the word for dog, iwa, uwa the baka, and the word for the sky, pati, the structure and vocabulary of the ancient Egyptian language has become more understandable in terms of Bantu linguistics. Illustrating the agglutination of the word with prefixes W, as in wabak, wab, waban, to be shining, and the prefix E in the word for dog, Iwa, illustrate convincingly that the ancient Egyptian language is an agglutinating language and its vocabulary consists prefixes. Present day Afro-Asiatic languages may find it difficult to explain every word in the sentence, the sun rises, shines in the sky in terms of etymology and grammatical construction as the words examined. And you can refer to Sir Alan Gardenia, page 36, Egyptian grammar, for further explanations. I was just here to show you Banabeto. Their lies are falling apart. And the truth of Ngai Murungu Mwene Nyaga, Tatana Nzambe, Mpungu Tulendo, Yamazulu, So Nini Na Nini, Somandla, yes, the mighty one of the Bantu who even the Indians, if you look deep at them, they know who Morungu is. Check the community page. There's only so much I can teach in a video. I keep asking you, Ungubani, who are you? Know thyself. Until next time, Banabeto. Thy, the other young guy, thy, thy, the other young guy, thy, thy, the other young guy, thy. Ingeta, Magubenjalo, thy. Rise of a nation, sounds from a liberated Bantu. It can be Banabantu. All praises to Sir Nini Nani. Hey. I'm Heather Vanna Vermoon.